But we're also seeing the evolution of the fuel cell, not as only an automobile application, but as a stationary application. And you're going to have to forgive me for a minute, taking a moment to go through this. It does have a role in transportation, but it also has a role in your life in the future, and already is playing a role in your life in the future. So let's talk about that. That hydrogen has to come from somewhere, and the primary source today is natural gas. And we reform it on site, or actually within the fuel cell, for the high temperature fuel cells, to create the hydrogen. The direct current needs to be transformed, we call it inverted, to produce that alternating current that we're used to. And that's the stationary application. This is a installation at Cal State University Northridge, one megawatt, right across from the student union. The university has put this open fencing so the students can come out and taste the future. <laughs> There's a kiosk right here to give them information. And they're taking that water and hot nitrogen and the exhaust and porting it over here to the left, can't quite see it over here, to a rainforest where the plants can absorb some of the CO2 in the water. Students can walk through them and start to see some of the interesting ways that we can actually further reduce our carbon signature over the high efficiency that this system provides. This system provides fuel to electrical conversion efficiency of 50% and the waste heat recovery gives it an overall efficiency exceeding 80%. Well, is that the only application in California? No, there are over 20 megawatts today deployed in California. Here you see these red dots all represent deployment. Another one is up here at Chico, just to bring it to your attention. I thought you'd enjoy this at lunch or be thinking about this afternoon and hope that you'll hereafter only drink Sierra Nevada, Nevada brew uh, beer. Here are the fuel cells right here. Uh, Korea is a country that's going very much in support of this technology. There's over 50 megawatts deployed and 70 megawatts of backload for not only Korea, but Southeast Asia. These are commercial, not demonstrations. These are commercial uh, deployments, hotels, prisons, and other facilities. Ah, another stationary application, your garage. I've left some space here for what, coming out of heaven, a fuel cell. <laughs> five kilowatts, about what you want. And we have today in Southern California, an Oregon company that is selling proton exchange membrane fuel cells for the garage, uh, Clear Edge, and many others who started to get into this market. It provides electricity and waste heat. Now some, this is thinking a little bit outside of the box, and I say some, I'm thinking of Honda and GM, Honda working with Plug Power, GM working with Quantum, are, considering that this could also be a source of son of a gun. This is a competitor to Clear Edge. Where did they come from? Plug Power. And I have to admit it's a little bit larger than what I have here. It's about that size, but still not too bad. So what is Plug Power doing with Honda? They are working with this concept of being able to refuel like we do with natural gas today in the garage uh, with hydrogen. This is a segue into this connection or this nexus between stationary fuel cell applications and transportation applications. Here we have the stationary. Let me kind of move that up the chart, bring back the mobile application that you see here, which requires hydrogen. And you can see what I've done here. I brought the hydrogen from this product of reformation in order to provide the fuel for the vehicle. An example of this would work is to bring a fuel cell again out of heaven into the uh, gas station or hydrogen station, uh, operate with natural gas, and it would supply a local customer like that condominium across the street with electricity, with a thermal product, and then on demand provide hydrogen to the uh, station. Uh, this is today the most energy efficient and environmentally responsible means of generating hydrogen 24-7 using a high temperature fuel cell. Because when you extract out hydrogen, there's a synergism that actually makes the fuel cell more efficient. It's kind of shown here with this slide. 
Here's the fuel cell being provided with natural gas, which is mostly methane. That fuel cell, when it's operating at the Sierra Nevada brewery or anyone else, will provide this about uh, 47 megajoules of electricity and then the resultant high quality heat that can be used. If I increase this, I can demonstrate the tri-generation of hydrogen. So let me kind of change things here and expand things out here to a label that I want you to keep your mind on, tri-generation of hydrogen. Best demonstrated here by just increasing this by 43 megajoules, put in more natural gas here, I still get out the same amount of quality heat and electricity, but now I get hydrogen at basically 100% efficiency because of this synergism that occurs within the stack as we put more hydrogen at the anode. What that means is that for this particular technology, using fuel cells, we're able to come down to a much lower footprint on the provision of, of hydrogen with respect to the CO2 signature. <coughs> but I can take it a step further. And now I get into Mike Dittinger's presentation this morning. Remember, on water? What I'm gonna do here is to replace natural gas with what we call renewable gases. That can be a digester gas or a landfill gas. And this energy station, which is a label given to this concept in the Schwarzenegger Blue Ribbon Report on the Hydrogen Highway, May 2005, is now not just an energy station, but it's a renewable energy station with renewable electricity, renewable thermal product, and renewable hydrogen. What that does here is to reduce the signature operating on the biogas to, uh, to zero. How would it look in Mike Dettinger's uh, wastewater treatment plant? Here's the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we process all of our sewage. Uh, we create this uh, anaerobic digester gas. That along with natural gas is used to produce heat for the digester to digest our human waste coming out of heaven, forgive me, that's the way it's coming, <laughs> is the high temperature fuel cell that now not only produces the heat for the digester, but produces AC power at this overall exceeding 80%. But now, well before I get to now, there's about eight megawatts of this deployed around California today. So as Bill Reiner said, it's not science fiction and it's going up rapidly as wastewater treatment sanitation agencies recognize the value of this strategy from every side of their operations. But they can now also consider a future where this can try generate hydrogen on demand. Now this is a little bit of science fiction, but it's transitioning into reality in that there's a project, Orange County Sanitation District, which is at the Euclid exit of the I-405, and in July, there'll be a commissioning of this technology uh, for you to actually uh, be able to uh, witness. There'll be a refueling station where you can refuel on, on hydrogen. And the team that's put together for that is Air Products, Fuel Cell Energy, and the uh, National Fuel Cell Research Center with support from the Department of Energy, Air Resources Board, and Air Quality Management uh, District. Few more slides to go, but one more transition or two. <laughs> Still begs the question of how are we gonna get that infrastructure out there? So let me just go through a little uh, analysis here for you. This is Irvine and Newport Beach, two so-called hydrogen communities established by the California Fuel Cell Partnership. There are how many gasoline stations? 59 in this area. And the question becomes, how many hydrogen stations would you need to serve the public? And the answer, of course, is 59. But as we start to look at some of the demographics that are important, uh, we first look at the existing hydrogen stations, and there are two existing, and then this Orange County Sanitation District station upcoming. Uh, what about the residential land use of this area, GIS data? 
What about the OEM market information? Companies such as Toyota, Honda, General Motors that have been polling the public to find out where is their interest within these communities for hydrogen. And you take that into account and you find out that the number of hydrogen stations that you need to satisfy the public to the degree they're satisfied today with the 59 stations is 14. About one quarter of the number of gasoline stations required. And one way to satisfy them is in travel times from their home to the stations, and these all satisfy the same travel time that the gasoline stations provide today.